do this in the mental health field and approach this, you can change lives. So right now I'm working, and I'm, I, all the people that I work for me, we work in Christian schools, we're BCBAs, and we train teachers and parapro paraprofessionals on how to work with children on the spectrum. It's a fantastic job, and there's so much need from a Christian perspective, from a Christian ministry, and that's why I point out this, eugenics. Does anybody know what eugenics is? Go ahead, speak up. Society's view of self? Close. That's, that's, that's a sort of partial way because it is kind of how we view the, the ideal self. Okay. <clears throat> Eugenics is basically the view that certain individuals, certain humans, certain types are inherently better than others. Okay? We saw this in World War II with Hitler and the Aryan race. The goal was to make everybody Aryan. This super race, this powerful race, right? That could do everything. <coughs> so, eugenics is the idea that certain individuals have inherently less value because of who they are, okay, or what they offer to us as a culture. Now, we see this even, you know, um, in terms of the view of, view of the self, which that was a good answer. I forgot I put that note, note up there. So society's view of the self is so totally pointed towards this, okay? Everything we see on television, everything we're exposed to in print, everything you guys hear at school with your friends is all a lie. It tells you to focus on yourself, that you matter more than anybody else, that it's all about you, but it's not. It's not. You need to see. Time flies. It goes by, look at my daughter. Okay, I've been at this church 13 years. Last week I was 8. This week I'm 30 and I'm standing here speaking. In a week I'll be 45 and in a month I'll be dead. Bet on it. That's how it goes. And we need to understand that my value does not come from who I am. From being at all good looking, at all smart, at all beneficial to society. None of it comes from that. It comes from God. Because I'm made in the image of God. And so is every human being on earth. And because of that, there is inherent value, inherent worth in the soul of a human being. And we have to see... <laughs> Now, I have this up here, too, in terms of the selfishness. There's a, there's a rapper I like called E-40, okay? And he has a line that he says, I'm so me out. Me, me, me. Ooh, me. I'm in love with me. And that is what culture pushes. That is what they want you to think. But that is not what Christianity teaches. And that is not what we as individuals ideally should seek to exhibit. Can you click on this? Or I probably won't load. <clears throat> so we're not even going to bother mess, messing it up. Floyd Money Mayweather. All right, this guy fought last night, right? He yeah. won. He oh, the champion, right? This guy, think about it. I watched this video that I put up here. It almost made me cry. Talks about how this guy spends his millions of dollars, okay? He's got private jets. Every car in Las Vegas is black. Everyone in Miami is white. He's got a G5. Wears new underwear every day. Gives his shoes to the host hotel staff. He only wears them once, right? Are you kidding me? I'm disgusted. I mean, if that doesn't turn your very soul, this is what they want us to seek after. This is what they tell us the ideal is. And we should not only look down on others who don't meet this ideal, but people who are even farther below don't even deserve our attention. I don't think that, that's obscene. And that, society's view of the needy and poor is very clear. All they want to do is euthanize them. It's legal in the Netherlands. They're doing it in Canada. All they want to do is get rid of those that are not worthy. Go ahead. It all comes back to selfishness. This idea that the pie is a certain size. And certain people, because they are not as good as others, we need to get rid of them so the others can have a bigger piece of pie. But it's deception. Because the pie is burning away. Okay? This earth, this universe, it is passing away. We know this. And so we don't need to focus on the tangible, on the now, on the things that really don't matter. And so what is the role of the church in the dark world that we live in to be a light, to be different, to stand up for those who can't advocate for themselves, okay? To value life, conception to birth. So often people talk about, oh, we should abort special needs children. There's people who do that. Because you can do tests to find out if your kids are going to have problems and they will abort them to avoid these problems. We need to understand the value of life comes inherently because God created life, right? He took man. We're different. He took us and he breathed into us the spirit of God. 
And this idea, listen, for biblical values, I tell you guys, I used to be one, and I've been modernized and poisoned by the culture, right? This idea of, of this, you know, gay marriage to be accepting. No, we need to be stand against it. We need to be strongly against these things. Not just, uh, you know, if somebody else aborts their kid, they're not really a, uh, you know, they're not really a Christian anyways. What I care what they do. You know what? No, we need to stand strong against these. And I want you to listen to Ezekiel chapter um, 9 because this is what changed it for me. Because I used to have a libertarian view that it was okay. Who cares what other people do? And I read this passage and it moved me. It's only 11 verses. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink horn, it's a pen, by his side. And they went in and stood behind the brazen altar, and all the glory of God of Israel was up gone from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the men clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin in my sanctuary. So think about that. God is saying, go into Israel and put a mark only on the people who are so disgusted with the abominations around them that they are sighing and groaning. Everybody who's okay, not even the ones who are just participating in these abominations, but just the ones who are okay with it, are slain with those participating. We must understand that God is a holy God. And there is a difference, and we need to do our best. Yes, we're saved by faith through Jesus Christ. This not of yourselves is the gift of God, right? Salvation is a one-time event. But when we call ourselves Christians, we have to work and try to walk and try to be lights. But the impossible is already done. That's the, the, the great atonement, if you will, where everything bad that I've ever done, that any of you have ever done, goes on Jesus, and his perfect life goes on us. You can go on, Tom. So it's not about how you live, but we need to seek to be the best we can be. Because this world will grab you. This world will fool you. And what I'm going to go on to next is about how blessed we are. Let's take a trip around the world. Perfect. Let's take a trip around the world. Let's go to Asia, right? Everybody in North Korea is whispering in church, praising God. Because if they sing too loud, the secret police will come and shut the church down. If you want to preach and start a church in China, you have to sign an agreement that you are an atheist. Otherwise, you can't do it. Okay, that's just, we're just touching on a very little bit of Asia. Africa, do you realize there are whole villages in the Congo where the army comes in and slays everybody except the children? And then they give the children the AKs and they send them on to the next village to do the same thing? Do you understand how blessed we are? We go to Europe, where anybody who believes a Bible is ostracized as a fool. Where everybody is accepting Islam as this massive religion, and everyone wants to be tolerant. And you understand they're pushing out the Christians. You can't be a Christian in Europe the same way you used to. It's not directly outlawed, but there is a ton of hidden persecution, if you will. Let's go, let's go to South America. Let's go to Mexico, the heart of uh, Catholicism and the cult that lives there, the poverty, the drug lords that run that place. It is a cesspool. Australia, this place is okay. It's okay. There's only 20 million people who live there, though, out of the 7 billion on Earth. But Australia is okay. All right? North America. How blessed we are. Look at the couches we have. Look at this place. The air conditioning, the food, the water, the hot water, anything you want. Restaurants on every corner. Every wicked desire your heart could ever have has the opportunity to be fulfilled in our nation. And they begin to program us from an early age that we should love this. That it's the right way to think. And you turn on the MTV Music Awards and they're blaspheming God. And Conan O'Brien is talking about how hail Satan. And it's a big joke. But it's not. 
Because God is on the throne. And we have to understand when we see this open occult activity in our world that we have to stand up to it, A, and B, we have to make it known to others. No, this wickedness is not okay. And this comes in the same way towards the discrimination that we see. You understand these people have value. Not only that, they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. Go ahead, Tom. Somebody say something? I was going to touch on something about that, but it's really not all that relevant. <laughs> I was wondering why you had it up there and didn't talk about it. It's cool. Well, you know, Admiral Byrd went there. He died. Nobody's really been back since. <laughs> we won't go there. All right. Empathy. 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 Somebody tell me what empathy is. The ability to feel something for someone else. Perfect. 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 Yes, the ability to feel something that someone else would feel. Different than sympathy in a sense, which would be feeling bad for somebody that something happened. So, think about this with these individuals, right? They're human beings. They have the same desire to connect. They might not get the same social reinforcement from communication that we do, but they have a strong desire to connect. They want friends. They realize they're different in a sense. So we need to go out of our way just to be kind and be nice, to realize these individuals might have struggles in certain areas, right? And so, like, even some of the stuff that was going on where, you know, people were, you know, saying things to these, to these kids, you know, about, like, okay, the rule governed behavior. All right, so somebody told this kid that somebody liked him. This is a perfect concrete example, okay? So what you just did is you put a rule in that kid's head. This person likes you with the connotation of the like that doesn't just mean his friends. You understand? So by placing that in that individual's head, you have directly impacted their future behavior, right? That's now a concept that they're going to go by, okay? Until maybe they have some confirmation the other way. But you see, these individuals can be very concrete, okay? So, hey, that's the way it is, you know? And you need to be cognizant of what you say and how your words can really serve as setting events for behavior you may not want to happen. Also, if you... Like, this is a perfect, like, if you're trying to ignore, right? Let's say that you're like, man, I don't want to be around this kid. This kid's annoying me, right? I just can't deal with it. I have to get away from him. And you're walking away from him, right? But you're looking back at the kid. You're giving him attention, right? You're not really going away, you know? And if he may be trying to come and maybe he's looking just to get any kind of reaction out of you and you're laughing or you're smiling or something else, even if it's with somebody different, he may interpret that as bringing joy and pleasure or something like that, and that brings him good feelings. Because he's a high-functioning high individual, he's, he's not stupid, you see? And certain individuals have characteristics on the spectrum, not that I know this individual enough to be able to vouch for him in this way, but almost like a savant-type gifts, okay? I have a kid, he's nine, okay? He watches Wonder Pets all day long at home. And you think, oh man, that's terrible, right? This kid has taught himself Russian, Japanese, and Spanish by memorizing the Wonder Pets in English and watching the shows in different languages on YouTube. <laughs> he can write whole sentences upside down and backwards, like, boom. And you got to hold it up to a, a mirror and you can read it. But when I'm trying to get him to do it forwards, it's like pulling teeth. So, you see, these individuals are not stupid in many ways. They may have struggles or deficiencies in some areas, but they also may have abilities that far surpass ours and others, you know? Now, <clears throat> even boundaries, right? So this could be something good, you know, I was thinking, you know, for like the youth in general, the idea being, if you have boundaries, or again, rule govern behavior, so if this individual is like trying to hug you or anything, like I don't know what it is, right? If we always have the rule in effect that a youth group, you only do side hugs, come up here, Cordy, hop up. So this would be a side hug, right? Bloop, because I have kids at my school want to hug me. No, I'm not going to hug you like this. You're not my kid. But if we have that same type of approach, you know, that it's always set. So these individuals understand that's a boundary for everybody. That's just a boundary. You're done. Thank you. That's just a boundary. But again, that would be a rule that you could, that type of thing, if that were an issue, where an individual is like touching your feely or something like that. And one of the things it talks about, God just doesn't tell us to be good to the needy and poor, like nothing will happen, right? What does he say? Luke 14, then said he also to them that bade him. When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. 
Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And so that's Luke chapter 14. And so we need to look for opportunities also to teach these individuals, right? If they do something that bothers you, teach them, right? They need help with the social interactions and stuff. If you see them do stuff right, encourage them. Dude, I love the way you shook my hand and looked me right in the eye. That's great. You think these individuals are not going to like that? I mean, see, we don't want to get in a position where, because we feel like, oh, I, I don't want to treat them different. And so because I don't want to treat them different, I don't know what to do. But, but, but they don't have, no, it's okay. Go out of your way. You know, do what you have to do to make the individual feel welcome to, in certain areas, right? They may be on your level with certain thought processes, but other areas they may struggle socially or something in certain uh, type of communication. They may have great eye contact, which this individual I know has really good eye contact, but sometimes he doesn't know what to say. Hey, you could even prompt him even, you know what I mean? Say, hey, look. Ask me how my day was. How was your day? That was great, man. My day was wonderful. I did this, 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 this. What did you do today? Oh, I read, yeah, I got to go over there. Hey, that's great, man. And now you've just had a positive social interaction. You've taught the kid without him even knowing you're teaching him the way to have that. So, some verses. Um, <clears throat> Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear thy God. I am the Lord. So that's pretty self-explanatory. And so much as the multitude wondered when they, and you can go on to the next one because I know it takes a minute, when they, oh, I know it's going to go that fast. <laughs> All right, yeah. goodness. Well, then we'll skip that. So Philippians 2, 4, don't merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. And again, that just goes back to what I said about stop being selfish. We have to really think about other people. It, it's an active thing. That's why it's a command, right? Love your neighbor as you love yourself because God knows we love ourselves. Galatians 6, 2, bear one another's burden and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. Okay, so think about this. If you had to live with this, right? If I was doing this right here and you would, you couldn't even handle it. Like think about if that was your life. If think about if all you could think about is, man, that door's open. Is oh, somebody ever going to shut that door? Why will somebody not shut the door? <laughs> and that's what's going on in your head, right? I mean, think about it. How it would be for you. It would be horrible. It would be awful. But you know what? This life is only a vapor. It's only a vapor. And they're not going to be like this forever. You see, it's part of a fallen world. I guarantee you that was not God's original design. The fall occurred, and because of that, because of sin, individuals end up with handicaps. Individuals have vision problems, problems with their limbs, right? On top of the fact that people are selfish and evil and wicked and could care about nothing but what fulfills their own desires. That's bad enough. But we also have individuals who have very tangible problems that we can look upon and see clearly. And we as Christians have to value those individuals because the rest of the world thinks they're trash because they can offer nothing. They suck up resources. What value do they have? You mean I have to spend my time with this individual? They can't even communicate? What am I getting out of this? Right? That's the world. We want to put them in an in a asylum or a hospital, get them away. The church needs to open their arms to these individuals because they have souls, okay? And right here, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Think of them as better is what that's saying, right? Because they are. Like really, guys, they're a lot better than you and me and all of us. Because an individual has an IQ of 50 or 60 or an individual on the spectrum who can't even function and their brain doesn't work right, they don't have the deep, innate, evil imaginations that go through my mind. If I could put your thoughts on this screen for one day, man, you would never show your face in this youth group again. If I could put my own thoughts on here, my daughter would never see me the same. These individuals don't have the capability to go to such dark places and pure religion and undefiled before God. And the Father is this, to keep himself unspotted from the world. The other part is to care for widows and orphans in their affliction. Unspotted by the world, okay? A kid who is watching Wonder Pets till he's 17 is not playing Call of Duty murder simulations, okay? He's not watching these horrific, violent Lord of the Rings movies. That's not happening. These thoughts, these imaginations are limited by what he's exposed to, by what he can comprehend. But you, but me, boy, 
Our wickedness is only held back by God's grace. It's a miracle we're not more wicked. So then, while we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So think about it. We have a chance to do good, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we know the unbelievers never do anything in their life to please God because they do not have any faith. But you have the capability to please God. What we do can make God happy, right? So we need to seek to do good, to go out of our way, right? If we're having a meal or something to invite individuals with struggles like that. Now this PhD with autism spectrum disorder, right? This guy teaches at a university. You know what he said the saddest day of his childhood was? When he found out all the people he thought were his friends were paid to be around them. Let that sink in. Holy cow. Everybody you thought actually cared about you was really getting a paycheck. Isn't that heartbreaking? Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. So, you see, just as God forgave you, you see special needs Christians down here, look, some of you and some of me, right, we are, we, we're spiritually special needy, right? We have been believers for a while, we have grown up in church, we know what is right and what is wrong, but we do wrong. We act like we can't learn. We act like we need 21,000 repetitions of a teaching before we pick up the proper way to live our lives. We look down on them because they have physical special needs when brothers and sisters, we should look at our own spiritual neediness and poverty. <coughs> Blessed are the poor in spirit. Matthew. Blessed are the poor. Luke. Blessed are the poor in spirit, man. Realize your spiritual poverty. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Hunger and thirst for it. How can you please God in this way? Go out of your way with these individuals to show them love. The love of Christ. I don't even know if I have another slide. We'll see. All right, perfect. Thank you all so much for your attention. Let me close this in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, you are good and holy, wonderful and amazing, powerful and mighty to save, God. We thank you that you save us by faith. We thank you that you don't judge us for how, uh, God, for our <coughs> wickedness. But on that great day, Lord, you will look at us and you will see us clothed with the righteousness of Christ. But, Lord, you still set a standard for us, God. And we, we know that we'll never live up to that standard. But help us to, uh, to walk in a manner more worthy of the gospel and more worthy of the calling that we've received. I pray even for the love um, of God just to explode in our hearts for other people, Lord. I pray that you will just um, help one, either, every one of these individuals to be able to have uh, contact with and, and to pour into the lives of indi individuals with special needs. And uh, we just thank you, God, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Colin, do you want to mention about the thing? Yes. So also, guys, there is uh, next Saturday, I've also got the mission team to approve this. So we're going to be uh, donating some money to the Appalachian trip for anybody. I'll give one to each of uh, you. Look at it. To anybody that wants to come and volunteer for this, we can pass that one back here. Let me see. This one will be handed back for them. And so this right here is basically next um, Saturday. It's before the event that we have at 3 to 6 at the church, right? And so it's basically going to be relocating furniture moving around in one of the special needs Christian churches that um, that I work in. So the opportunity is there to have some interaction with other special needs, you know, children who are also Christian and families and help out a, you know, a Christian ministry and also get a donation for Appalachia. And it's going to be up to 500 depending on participation. So um, if anybody's interested in that, just let me know, guys. I'll be sticking around here for another 15, 30. Did you have a question? Yeah, I'm going to, I'll try to come. Okay. I think I'm open next Saturday, but I'm not going to need money for the Appalachian. I'm just going to come out. Oh, man, that's awesome, dude. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, so any, anybody who wants to participate, just let me know. And